Welcome, Rudson and Sean. In we, the house. In the house. We have a talk uh, in my not uh, uh, mother language. Uh, normally I'm speaking German. Now I try me in English and it will be interesting. I'm going to speak Criollo. <laughs> Please do it, do it, do it. Criollo and, uh, do it. and, and German. <laughs> do it. So we are here on the On Fire Urban Kiss Festival in Constance, organized by Raman and Tabea. Beautiful and place. Beautiful place. And we have, we have, um, we have a lot of workshops from you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not the first time you're in Germany, or? No. Okay. So do you feel a um, difference between different cities when you have contact with the humans that living in the city when you're traveling to another festival from festival? Yes, uh, that, is a, that is a huge difference and it, it also changes the way I teach. If I teach, for example, in a place where the people are constantly stressed, I get to the class and the class has a, like a different energy. I wouldn't say negative, but I would say weird energy. If the, the, the people are based, like the daily routine is based in stress. Uh, when I go teach in places where the mentality is open, mm -hmm. like the people are super open, my energy to teach them changes automatically. So now, how how you have the feeling in Germany are the people in... in uh different to another city, country. Do you have a feeling that we are different? The German people, are they different? Uh, many people say that Germans are very strict, like, um. I kind of agree that, but Germans are very, very open, open-minded, to be honest. They are very, uh, they see reality of what it is and not what television says for example mm. I like to socialize with Germans because they have a lot to give and to teach I would say according to their history of, of Germany they suffered a lot uh, and that's why they have a lot to teach and for me every time I'm gonna teach whatever the dance style Germans they embrace it and also they teach me a lot when we go to uh, the teacher, festival teacher, inside talk, and we uh, look at your past uh, experience with, with another dance teachers on festivals, what are points you have feeling different of the mentality of other dance teacher at festivals? <laughs> I'm going to say, say a joke in my, in my native language. That at cagada in this lugar. So, translating it and not sounding too toxic, uh, there is a lot of, this is like a salad. <laughs> I see it, I see it as a salad. Now, why do I see it as a salad? The teachers are, they are just bringing to the, to the community who they are. And some teachers, they even didn't find themselves yet. So they just bring it to the community. Let's say that I am a, I am a ballroom dancer and then there is another dancer, he's a hip-hop dancer. The ballroom dancer struggled so much in the wrong way to learn ballroom. And after five years he creates the illusion that he's an amazing ballroom dancer. So that, that's the, the reflection problem. That you look at the mirror, you think you are fat but you are skinny in reality. The same thing happens with an hip hop dancer. He builds his ego so, so strong because he danced hip hop for five years. But when it comes to muscle memory movement, body control, it's very limited and it's not coordinated. But guess what? Both of these situations want to bring to the Kizomba scene the best of themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's why it becomes a salad because they are bringing to the community something they didn't master. Mm -hmm. And that's when they're going to bring it to another dancer who didn't master. And then it becomes this moustache of ketchup and mayonnaise. <laughs> uh, on me, uh, it's, I see it as a negative and positive, so I'm not going to connotate that it is negative, is it positive? It's the natural human process. Important is that people are giving their best 
but it's important for me to understand if that's the best I want or if it's, that's the best I want. How we can grow up as festival teacher on festival in between the festival teacher and the community in form of clients in the classes? How can you grow up yeah. as a teacher? Yeah, right. To be a better, oh, okay. better dance in teacher for, for, at festivals for the clients. Whoa, that was, that's a definitely difficult question. Um, I'm gonna say, if we look at the Kizomba scene a few years ago, like honestly, let's take three generations ago mm -hmm. when we had the generations of Gwenda Lima, Zé Barbosa, uh, Avelino Chantre, uh, the Angolan dancer, I uh, forgot his name, Mestre Pechu. Uh, I didn't forget his name, I was searching for it. Master Pechu. They are actually the teachers who started in the right way. Mm -hmm. They start inspiring people to dance. And today, the third generation after, you have people who want to get attention. They want, they want to be there in the center, having a circle of couples looking at them. And that's for me, it's the first red flag how to be the best version of yourself as a dance teacher. Because the definition of a dance teacher is not the person who teaches someone else to dance, because you cannot do that. I cannot teach you to dance. Mm -hmm. You are the only one who can teach yourself to dance. Teach yourself. It means you have something inside of you that you need to teach to, to dance. What does it mean dance? Dance is the expression of yourself. That's it. So if I cannot teach you to dance, what can I do? I need to inspire you to learn. When they, I inspire me as a dance educator, I inspire you. And the you teaches the self, job done. Me as a teacher, I successfully got it. Now going to the part of festivals. Um, first of all, I'm going to lose some bookings with what I'm going to say. Okay. <laughs> First of all, be careful with the organizers you, you work for. It's, it's, it's very important. Don't work with, the, with people, organizers, who, who don't select uh, good. They just follow other organizers. So if a big festival has a lot of teachers, they're going to copy past. And you end up connecting your image with that unprofessional service that that not professional organizer is providing. So rule number one, select the events you're gonna present yourself. That's a very important. How to do that? Research about the organizer. Talk to the organizer. See what's the intention behind the organizing doing that event. Why? Some organizers, they do it for ego. They are not famous dancers. They are not good dancers. They are not requested to dance in the parties. They don't get the attention. So how they can get that? By organizing events. And they absolutely don't care of quality of the dance community. That's it. Second, they want money. Well, we all want money. But it's important to sell quality first. Last but not least, my advice to a teacher who wants to be a good influencing dance educator in festivals, uh, work hard. Work hard on, ho on your skills. And when I say work hard on your skills, it means not dancing one hour a day or two hours a day. You have to leave dance minimum from when you wake up till when you go sleep. Because how can you pass a passion to someone that you are not, um, you don't, you, you're not loving what you're doing? So when you get to the dance floor in a big festival, you must, sorry my metaphor, you must have weapons for every type of killing you're going to do. Basically speaking, you have to master your musicality, master your muscles, master your energy, master the rhythm, master different methodologies. You have to know, master philosophy. 
master as much as possible different fields you can. Last but not least, work on your marketing. Marketing is a good word. When we look at the potentials that you see on yourself, the question next will be, what you think are the reason that you not living the maximum or more potentials you have in you, you maybe feel it's more, but you don't catch it, you don't get it. What you need to reach more your potential? As a dancer or as a teacher? You. The you. Like personally, I would say for me to reach my max potential as a me, I need to know myself. I need to know who I am. So it's not about going up, but it's all about digging down, knowing my roots, knowing who I am as a person. Who's behind the Hudson? Who's managing the Hudson? If I get to connect with this thing or person managing the Hudson, I think that's the best way to be the best version of myself. Uh, extra would be give. When you give to people, you, you absolutely become the best version of yourself. It is maybe sometime better to ignore what is the past, past and look more forward and, and dis disconnect with, with identifying things from, I, from yourself. Like, okay, you have um, Bindung German Chi and normally the people stuck in the future on passing things that, 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 that um, traumata. So, When, when we're looking at potential, sometimes it's potential, let all traumata fix it, be, be new setting, re reset, and now look at the, at the future with, without emono, em, emotional emotions that, that, that from the past, when you go in future situations. So it's maybe here more poten potential for you when you letting more past emotions that that coming back in the future because you have the past better when you when you let it away and and fix this and you have so more potential what you thinking well here i would give you two answers yeah there are there are two different situations future and past doesn't exist mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like einstein said There is only one thing, it's called present, mm -hmm. and that's it. What changes are the expectations of my past and the expectations of the future? That's what makes it different. Many people don't live in reality. Mm -hmm. People just live in their traumas. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. That's, that's the point. So it leads us to the second part of the, mm -hmm. of the, of the, the question. If I'm gonna live in my traumas, I'm gonna People build. Do. I'm gonna build myself very strong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You might not agree with me with what I'm mm -hmm. saying. If you focus in your traumas, if you suck mm -hmm. as much as possible you can from your trauma, you become strong like you have no idea. I could give you an example. You go to gym. You're gonna build muscles. What do you do? You have to traumatize the muscles. Mm -hmm. You have to break the muscles and then to build them again. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's important to take the best of yourself when it comes to understanding your traumas and mm -hmm. not just cure them or ignore them mm -hmm. because they're going to stay there. For people who live too much in the, in the future, actually that's the definition of stress, mm -hmm. people who live in the, in the future, uh, try to to see how was your past. Because if you want to live in the future, just take a look on your past. What you did on the past five years? What was the profits? Did you have a checklist? What was the differences? And for the people who live too much in the past, I would advise them to think, what do you have? What do you want to get from the future? 
And when you see these two things, stay in the present. That's how I can answer this question you said. Very Perfect. interesting nice. question. Okay, when we now have the complete talk that we have together now, and uh, we want to put something missing in it, what it will be as the last answer from you? What will the missing part, when we have a missing part of all now um, 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 questions? If I would complete all yeah. the questions and, the, and answers you made me so far, love is the answer. Love. Mm -hmm. Love is the answer. Now, be careful because you can only formulate a, co a question if you have the answer. Mm -hmm. You cannot make a question without knowing the answer. Basically speaking, you're asking for the validation. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, what time is it? You're making question, what time is it? But that's because you know this is afternoon. Mm -hmm. You just need to know precisely yeah. the time. So you're asking for the validation. Love is the answer. So what's the question? Okay? So now you now that it may start making sense. Mm -hmm. Now when I say this, let me bring you one of the three types of love. Yeah. You have true love, you have bomb love, and you have fish love. So then we make the question, which love do you have? And then you answer, love is the answer. When you give me for every love, from the, from the three points we have in the love, um, give me for all love um, an example, please. The first one, the, the fish love. Mm -hmm. oh, no, that was the third one, sorry. No, okay, fine. let's go for the fish love. Fish love. Mm -hmm. Fish love is, it comes from a personality of people who are very narky. Narky, it means a narcissistic, uh -huh. narcissistic profile. Narky people are the ones who make everybody around them happy. Mm -hmm. But they make everybody around them happy for them to feel safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I am going to sacrifice who I am to make everybody happy. So that's called fish love. Mm -hmm. the, real, the real definition of it is, I love fish. Okay, if you love fish, why do you kill it and eat it? So you are sacrificing something to make the self happy. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's a very toxic and red flag behavior when it comes to what is love. Uh, mm -hmm. Love is the answer. Do what you do, do it with love. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful with applying fish love effect in mm -hmm. what you do. The second one was bomb love. Bomb love, or it's a, it's a behavior that comes from many people who have a very difficult situation in their life. And then suddenly they find one thing that they can hold on mm -hmm. and they put all the possible love on it. So they will love and treasure and pro protect that thing that is keeping them safe mm -hmm. in a moment. But guess what? A problem is just a thought. You're just thinking about something and you think it's, 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 it's a reality, but it's not. Problem is just a thought. Mm -hmm. This leads for the fact that emotions have a short time. So when the emotion finish, the thought finishes, the problem finishes. So you no longer need that thing or person you holding so strong, you loving so strong. Mm -hmm. So then the bomb, boom, is no longer making effect. And then what happens? You just put that thing aside. You just put that person aside. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called love bomb. Mm -hmm. It's just for a moment, but it feels so strong. Yeah. But you are using it because you need to somehow protect or survive through a situation you had a month ago, a week ago, a year ago, and that's it. And it's not fair for the other person, and it's not fair for the object or the situation you're holding on to. And then we have true love, the first one. Uh, I don't have definition of true love. Uh, the only people who can give the definition of true love are mothers. Mm -hmm. Mothers are the ones who can say, this is true love. 
and that's the end of it. What I know, I can understand for true love is give. What you give. And no matter what, time, energy, object, words, uh, eye contact, is whatever you give without expecting. And the moment you give and you're like, no, thank you, that's for me love in any form you want to put it, in any size you want to put it. That's why I always say love is the answer. But you need a question. And what's the question? What is love? This was Ratzen and Sean. We're going to see us. Woo! We have a demo together. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. It was Thank a very you. nice moment.